بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين When we visit Imam Hussein عليه السلام in زيارة وارث not only we pay tribute and homage to him but also we pay tribute to all universal messengers who preceded him and also preceded his grandfather, Prophet Muhammad And there is a strong reason for that. First of all, Ziyarat Tawarith is the most credible and the most authentic uh, ziyara among all the ziyarat, all the uh, visitations that have been produced in that it has been narrated by the sixth Imam Al Imam al Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam and it has been transmitted by Ibn Qulaway in his credible important book Kamil Ziyarat and Kamil Ziyarat is one of the most reliable also one of the oldest uh, sources of uh, Islamic history and Islamic ziyara in the Shia uh, in the Shia culture and the Shia tradition so this ziyara has been narrated by the sixth Imam and it begins by saying assalamu ala Adam assalamu alayka ya waritha Adam safwatillah assalamu alayka ya waritha Nuh an-nabiyillah assalamu alayka ya waritha Ibrahim khalilillah assalamu alayka ya waritha Musa kalimillah assalamu alayka ya waritha Isa ruhillah assalamu alayka ya waritha Muhammad habibillah assalamu alayka ya waritha Amir al-mu'minin alayhi assalam waliyillah and then of course it continues so why do we Number one, why do we mention all the universal messengers and the prophets here when we pay tribute to Imam Hussein? Because Imam Hussein salam is the continuation of the previous messages. And all these messages and messengers, they carry one theme, universal theme. They invite people to worship God. So Imam Hussein is not a departure from that norm. It is, he is the continuation of that norm and that tradition. He is following up and integrating the work and the mission of the previous messengers and the prophets. And of course, from each prophet, he took one specific trait and a quality. Now we come to Warith. What did he take from, uh, we come to Adam alayhi salam, and what did he inherit? Warith means the inheritor. What did he inherit from Adam alayhi salam? There are several opinions in this regard. One of them, it says that since Adam alayhi salam was the first man and the first messenger that God sent to the humanity, he was succeeded by nine successors or awsiya. One of those successors or maybe number ninth of them was Noah, the messenger of God who lived for almost 1700 years. So Imam Hussein has a similarity with Adam in that he also has nine successors after him his descendants who came after him became the imams of the muslim ummah and the ninth descendant of imam hussein which is al imam al mahdi ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif may allah expedite his reappearance is also the longest serving imam as noah was the longest serving prophet Al Imam al Mahdi salam, is the longest serving Imam or Wasi or successor to the Prophet and also to Imam Hussein. Salam. So there is one similarity here that both of them, Adam 
and Imam Hussein, peace be upon them, they had nine successors after them. Another similarity is that Allah chose Adam. Assalamu alayka ya waritha Adam Safi Allah. Safi means the elite, the chosen one, someone who has been chosen by God, someone who has been favored. Safi is the chosen or the favored person or the best or the finest. So from all this mankind in this entire universe, God chose Adam السلام, to be his very first successor, vicegerent, and caliph on earth. إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً In Surah Al-Baqarah, God broke the news to the angels that I am going to place on this earth a vicegerent, a caliph, and that was Adam السلام. So God chose him to be his vicegerent from among maybe billions of souls, human souls. And we know that the spirits or the souls of the humans, they preceded their physical creation. So God chose Adam. And this is exactly what we read in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3 in the Holy Quran, verse 33, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين. God has chosen Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran above mankind. He favored them. He chose them to be his uh, rep representatives on earth. So since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Adam to be his vicegerent, there is a sim similarity here between Adam and Imam Hussein in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Imam Hussein to be the master of the martyr, Sayyid al Shuhada, and the first shaheed, and the first martyr, and the best martyr among the prophets and the successors of the prophets, the community that has been chosen by God. That community is divided into two sections. One of them are prophets, Anbiya. The other is the successors, Awsiya. And Imam Hussein is among the Awsiya, not the Anbiya. So God chose him from among all the Awsiya, all the vicegerents of God, to be the master of the martyrs. So there is a similarity again here. Adam was chosen to be the first vicegerent, and Imam Hussein was chosen to be the first and the most important and the master of the shuhada and the martyrs. So we greet all those uh, prophets because Imam Hussein, on the day of Ashura, he exemplified, epitomized the message of all those anbiya. And we know. Imam al-Sadiq has a beautiful hadith in, in this regard. He says that every Imam that has been chosen by Allah will receive and inherit the legacy of the Anbiya. What is the legacy of the Anbiya? It's not property, it's not money, it's not gold, it's not physical items. These legacies are the scriptures that they left behind the authentic scriptures, it goes to the Imam, and the next Imam, uh, the previous Imam gives it to the next Imam until they gather with Al Imam Al Mahdi. And also the covenant, Uhudul Anbiya, the covenant that they made with God to remain strong, steadfast on his path, to advocate the cause of God to advocate monotheism and tawheed. So Imam Hussein, he is the inheritor of these legacies. On the day of Ashura, he exemplified all the divine messages in his stand. And what was the message of Imam Hussein? He mentions that very clearly. Inni lam akhruj ashiran wala bataran. 
I have not risen on the account or on the ground of self-conceit nor arrogance wala zaliman nor as an oppressor wala mufsidan neither a person who intends corruption wa inma kharajt i have risen on the ground on the account li talab al islah seeking reforms rectification li talab al islah fi ummati jaddi in the community of my grandfather the community of islam this was the purpose of my revolution against bani umayyah uridu an amra bil ma'ruf my main goal is to bid to good and forbid the evil uridu an amra bil ma'ruf wa anha 'anil munkar wa asir bi sirati abi wa jaddi and i want to follow the footsteps of my father imam ali alayhi salam and my grandfather the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he came to defend the oppressed against the oppressors the tyrants the dictators and that was exactly the message of all the messengers from day one god says in surah al hadid laqad arsalna rusulana bil bayyinat wa anzalna ma'ahum al kitaba wal mizan liyaqum al nas bil qist we have sent our messengers apostles prophets with a clear evidence and we sent with them the scripture and the scale the scale means the balance of knowing distinguishing the good from the bad wa anzalna ma'ahum al kitaba wal mizan for one reason main reason so the humanity would stand forth for justice liyaqum al nas bil qist that was the message of all the messengers that was their main goal to invite people to stand up for justice to advocate justice to promote justice and to resist and fight injustice and this is exactly what imam hussein alayhi salam did on the day of ashura therefore he represented all the prophets of god all the messengers of god all the books they trickled down to the qiyam the revolution the stand the sacrifice of imam hussein on the day of ashura and therefore he deserves to be the inheritors the warith of all those anbiya of their sacrifice of their missions of their role that they played in their societies he carried that banner the baton was passed to him he carried it and in the day of ashura he was standing on one side on on his side was allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the angels all the anbiya and the truth on the other side yazid stood who was the embodiment of deviation and corruption the embodiment of evil where imam hussein alayhi salam was the personification of a truth and justice those two groups stood on the day of ashura uh in a very visible confrontation between haq and batil between the truth and falsehood and ultimately the one who won that day was imam hussein alayhi salam and this is a clear evidence after so many years so many centuries imam hussein is the hero look at how many millions of people millions of human souls they gather every year to commemorate and celebrate the day of ashura and to learn and get inspired by that and to be guided to be guided by the message the universal message of imam hussein alayhi salam